struggling with both anger and extreme grief. Family and friends of Santino Wilson gather Tuesday night at the plaza where he died. Please call this visual just to remember him and say we love him. And we're going to miss him. The 39-year-old was here at Kinsman and 75th Street around 6.30 p.m. Monday when Cleveland police say the occupants of one car began shooting at another car in the parking lot and a stray bullet struck Santino in the chest as he dove for cover behind this guardrail. What they did to my nephew here, was uh, it, it wasn't right. It wasn't right. He don't bother nobody at all. He just mind his own business. They just come up and just shoot him like that. That's not right. It's all too much to bear, say loved ones who just saw Santino on the 4th of July. This is intolerable. This is not right. He didn't deserve that. He didn't deserve none of that. He didn't deserve that at all. He was a good guy. a family guy. He makes sure his family is okay. He's very active in the community. Santino lived in Mayfield Heights and worked for Metro Health Medical Center as a logistics driver, but never forgot his old neighborhood, says Dolores Walton, who's known him since he was a baby. Santino was a wonderful young man, never got into any kind of trouble. And I just couldn't believe what happened yesterday. I got the call letter. I went to pieces. Now, as they tearfully remember his gentle soul, they also pray security cameras will help police catch those responsible. If you know something, turn yourself in. Whatever's going on, they'll, they'll find out, because he definitely was not in, into any kind of criminal activity. We know that. Violence needs to stop. It's too much, too much stuff going on. Hey, Shalom, 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 Shalom. Hey, first and foremost, I would love to give all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His Son, who majority of the planet Earth ignorantly calls God and Jesus Christ. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught us this truth. Blessings and, uh, you know, safety to the Akim and y'all families out there who believe on the name Yahweh by Shem Shah in truth and sincerity to you. I say Shalom. All right. And, you know, you know, I actually grew up with this guy. OK, I'm from this neighborhood. Uh, you know, I was, you know, born and raised there. Uh, Twenty five years I was down there, um, you know, to the world, man. You know, he was a good dude to the world, you know, because. You know, he wasn't, you know, a drug dealer. You know, he wasn't a, you know, a part of no gang. Okay. And, um, you know, he didn't rob. He didn't steal. You know, he had a job. He took care of his family. You know, he looked out for people in the neighborhood. You know, so to the world, that's righteous. Okay. But the scriptures also say there are, you know, are ways which seem right unto a man. But at the end, there are the ways of death, man. Because, you know, in the eyes of the Lord, that's not righteous. Okay. Now, <clears throat> you know, drug selling and robbing and killing, you know, that's all wickedness, man. But, you know, people don't understand, you know, the way of the Lord. And the scriptures say my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. Okay, because no one understands judgment. When you read the book of Job, uh, I believe the fourth chapter, let me grab that real quick. The book of Job. I believe it's Job, the fourth chapter, verse seven, it says, remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent, okay? Because, you know, we heard that word innocent, you know, being thrown around a few times in, a, in that short clip, okay? As a matter of fact, when you open up, it says an innocent man is re being remembered after he was shot and killed in front of a convenience store on Cleveland's east side. You know, an innocent man. But the scriptures say what? Job 4 and 7. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perish being innocent. No one. Okay? Because at the end of the day, you know, we are, you know, all worthy of death, man. Because we have sinned against the Lord. But no one takes that to heart, man. You know, the Lord doesn't need you to be, you know, he, he doesn't need you to look out for the community, man. You know, the Lord can look out for the community his damn self. You know, if you're, you know, so-called black man, Latino, Hispanic, Native, and Seminole Indian, man, you're supposed to be coming back to the Lord, you know, uh, coming out, pushing his word, or, you know, uh, 
getting your household prepared, man. Not trying to be some type of activist in the, in the neighborhood, man. You know, and I know this guy for, you know, you know, taking pictures of women, you know. You know, he was known to be an adulteress. You know, people don't, you know, they fail to mention that, you know. Hey, the scriptures talk about, you know, a man dealing with another man's woman. You know, no one takes that to heart, man. Okay, but see, people don't understand how the Lord moves. They don't understand judgment. All right, this is Proverbs 28 and 5. Evil men understand not judgment, okay? They don't They don't understand that the Lord can judge you for the things you did in your past life, okay? They don't understand that the sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, man, okay? A nigga was all out wicked, you know, you know, uh, you know, you know, 10 years ago, all out wicked. You know, I'm not saying him. I'm just saying in general, a man all out wicked 10 years ago. But, you know, in these last couple of years, he get his life together. OK, now he's on the so-called right path. And then some 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 evil come upon him. You know, they don't understand how the Lord work, man. The Lord, uh, the judgment doesn't, you know, be announced. You know, judgment, you know, happens, you know, unexpectedly, man. Proverbs 28 and 5, evil man understand not judgment, but they that seek the Lord understand all things, man. So we understand that, you know, this guy right here, which, like I said, I grew up with him. You know, he was cool, but, you know, he was put to death righteously. OK, he was put to death righteously, righteously. It wasn't it wasn't a mistake. OK, and he wasn't innocent. OK, when you think cardinally, you know, you, you say, you know, hey, man, they were shooting out the car and you know, trying to, you know, target someone else, but, you know, he was in a way and happened to get struck, man. No, he was on the radar of your how about Shimei was shot, man, which a lot of you individuals are, you know, on the radar as well, and judgment is going to come upon you, people out there unexpectedly as well, man. But I got a quick precept, okay? This is the book of uh, Zephaniah. Book of Zephaniah, chapter three, verse five. It says, "The just Lord is in the midst thereof; he will not do iniquity." Man, okay. So, if the Lord was to put someone to death unrighteously, man, that would be iniquity. Okay, but the scriptures say what? Zephaniah three and five: "The just Lord is in the midst thereof; he will not do iniquity. Every morning, do if he bring his judgment to light, he fell of not, but the unjust know of no shame, man." All right, so this is judgment. Hey, Deuteronomy 32 and 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand, man. So, man, the Lord did this, man. Okay? And there's no such thing as bullets doesn't have any eyes, man, because they do. The Lord knows where he's directing those bullets towards he know he he knows who's gonna get hit you know with him man you don't know that but the lord know that there's no such thing as being at the wrong place at the wrong time man the lord puts you in situations man to be judged you know this is yahweh bahashem yahweh shai man the god of the bible who's bringing judgment on these people man The scriptures say what, man? In the, uh, in the Apocrypha. Matter of fact, let me grab that. Bear with me, brothers. I had to get my Apocrypha, man. You know? This is uh, Second Ezra. Chapter 15. Verse 26. It says, For the Lord knoweth all them that sin against him, and therefore delivereth he them unto death and destruction, man. Okay? The scriptures say what, man? The wages of sin is death, man. See, people out here, man, they want to, you know, uh, uh, be wicked, man. But when the judgment come upon them, man, they don't want to accept it. You know? You know, family members, you know, see certain things that people doing that's wicked, man. But you don't correct them. But as soon as the judgment come upon them, you can't accept it. This is Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 12. Were they ashamed when they had commit, committed abomination? All right. You know, when these individuals, man, you know, you know, committing this wickedness, man. Like I said, man, you know, he was known for, you know, dealing with other men and women, you know, taking pictures of them, you know, things like that, man. He was known for that. 
You know, I haven't been around this guy. You know, I ran into him in Walmart, told him I was an Israelite. Then I changed my life around, you know. You know, I did a 180, man, you know, and, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, I'm still in the, you know, in the hood and, you know, things like that, man. You know, I took, I took his number down and never, you know, talked to him again. So I don't know, you know, was he still into what he was into? But guess what, man? There's no set in a point time where the Lord is going to bring judgment. He, it happens, man. The Lord can get you. If the Lord can get you for something you did in your past life, man, you know, he can get you. Why, why shouldn't the Lord be able to get you for something you did in this lifetime? Even though you did it 15 years, it don't matter. The scriptures say uh, our thoughts are not his thoughts, neither are our ways or uh, his ways, man. The Lord is on a whole nother level, man. How can a creator, how can a creature question the creator, man? Jeremiah 8 and 12, were they ashamed when they committed abomination? Nay, they were not all ashamed, neither could they blush. Therefore shall they fall among them that fall in the time of their visitation. They shall be cast down, saith the Lord, man. So people, not, they're not ashamed, man, for being wicked. You know, they, they're they not ashamed for, 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 for being uh, contrary to Yahabah Shimei Awashah, man. You know, they're not ashamed. You know, they don't feel guilty. You know, but hey, man, this is the outcome of 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 being contrary to what the scriptures say, man. And things like this is going to take place on a larger scale, man. You know, so you know, hey, man, you know, you know, I didn't read in no, none of this article, man, but you know, I, the point was, you know, made, man. This is judgment from on high, man. All right. Jake, you know, better get right, man, for it's too late, man. Shalom.